Good morning. Thank you for joining today's HILI Manufacturing and International Trade Committee meeting. Today we'll be talking about how to do business with friends, doing business with friends, and we have a, a panel of experts with us, and we'll learn from them about the uh, economy, opportunities, uh, challenges uh, in the marketplace, as well as business customers. So let's learn from experts today. That is our subject subject matter. Uh, thank you very much for joining today's uh, committee meeting. Appreciate it. My name is Kevin Deveso Oglu, and uh, I am the co-chair. I'm a co-chair of uh, the committee. I'm with my colleague uh, Ron Van Lent, and we uh, run uh, monthly meetings together with Ron, as uh, most of you know. And uh, in essence, uh, what we do is uh, we have uh, manufacturers um, learn from experts at our meetings. And our goal is to basically uh, help manufacturers thrive in Long Island area. And uh, it is important for us to meet uh, monthly, uh, second Wednesday of every month. And we uh, organize our meetings as educational as possible, mm -hmm. as informative as possible. We talk about, as you know, uh, technology, best manufacturing practices, quality management, and other subject matters that is really actually very helpful and uh, informative for manufacturing and business community in Long Island, New York area. Um, in the meantime, if uh, you can keep your uh, microphone muted, uh, that'd be great. We are getting some background noise uh, so that we can have a better uh, webinar experience if that's all right. As you know, uh, last year we had many uh, international trade-related uh, activities and uh, meetings. We talked about uh, doing business with Vietnam, we talked about uh, doing business with uh, China, for example, that was also a very informative meeting last year. Uh, in terms of uh, international trade, also we talk about international standards and how to utilize it in international marketplaces, for example. Uh, so that was also, they were also very informative for, uh, for our uh, members and also our followers at our uh, committee. And in coming months, we'll continue to do so, and I'll talk about also our coming uh, meetings as well in uh, towards the end of our uh, uh, our uh, committee meeting. Um, so um, I also like to invite you to our LinkedIn page. We have a pretty active LinkedIn page for our committee uh, followers and members. On our uh, LinkedIn page, we also share uh, information announcements as well as coming meetings of our our committee, so that you can uh, be in touch uh, with our committee and. Uh, you'll be notified when there's a new uh, notification and update in terms of events. Great, uh, I think Tony Joy is with us. So maybe, uh, uh, Tony Joy, are you there? Hi, yes, good morning, Kevin. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. how are you? <laughs> good, good, how are you? Thanks so much for the introduction. Um, good morning. Coming. Yes, of course. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. My name is Tony Joy Candela. I'm the office manager with the HIALI, and I am the manufacturing uh, staff liaison. Um, again, I just wanted to thank both Kevin and Ron. Um, they do a wonderful job as committee co-chairs and putting on really progressive programming for all of our members and all of you this morning um, for all of our, our manufacturing committee meetings. So just a couple updates that I wanted to share briefly with you all in regards to some upcoming programs as well as some of the initiatives that the HIA is working on at the moment. Um, so as it relates to uh, COVID, the HIA has been really active in working with um, Suffolk County um, as well as um, just the local uh, governing to help get some um, information to our Long Island uh, businesses as well as our members. So a couple of things that we're working on right now just to kind of keep you guys all in the loop. Um, again, we are working on health and safety initiatives to help vulnerable populations with education on COVID prevention. Um, we are working on a vaccine distribution distribution initiatives. The purpose is to help Suffolk County create pods for vaccine distribution. Um, we're also working on developing a campaign uh, called Give Your Health a Shot so that we can really encourage employees, employers to get vaccines and um, really get the overall herd of um, the community, uh, the immunity so that we can reopen the economy. Um, again, really looking to spread more awareness about it, um, education, educational resources, things along those lines. So we're actively working on that um, as we speak. And I also did want to just kind of shift gears and invite you to some of our upcoming programs. Um, our next program that we have is on March 18th, which is our 27th annual economic summit. 
Um, it's, it's a survey of the future of Long Island business. So it is a uh, opinion poll and um, economic survey that is conducted by PFK O'Connor Davies. Um, this is something that has been done every year. It really gives a good idea of real estate market revenue prices, local and national confident ratings, headcount and salary adjustments, um, things along those lines. So if you are interested in attending that, um, again, that is coming up on March 18th, as well as later this month, we do have, um, we've had our monthly networking and trivia, um, that which this month it will be on the 26th. And it's just a kind of a very fun, casual environment um, to just network with some other members. Um, it kind of ends the week from 4 to 5 p.m. on the 26th of March, on a, that which is a Friday. Um, and then we also have, just to keep you informed, we have a, our CEO forum. It's their second of the year. It's featuring Greg Galdi, who's um, the founder and president of Custom Computer Specialists, um, and really gets an idea and you kind of get into the head of a CEO and how they pivoted, pivoted throughout COVID and um, just what they've had to do in their leadership style and, and just get a really um, interested perspective of their journey as um, they progress through their career. So, um, so those are just some of the ones that we have coming up. Um, of course, if you have any questions or if you want more information about anything, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'd be happy to help you. And I'll pass it back to Kevin. Let me join. Thank you so much, as always. Thanks, Kevin. JLA is uh, very, very active, right? Uh, many, many events are going on. Uh, so I appreciate, uh, I appreciate for the, uh, for the update. Thank you very much. And uh, if you would like to learn more about uh, HALI events and uh, coming meetings, please uh, visit HALI website. Uh, the calendar is updated uh, periodically. Uh, as by HILI, as we know it, uh, very active, very active, which is good for, for Long Island uh, business community, for all of us. And we um, appreciate this uh, help and support uh, of HILI um, during these times, especially during COVID 19. Okay, perfect. Uh, so let's uh, get started with our panel, uh, if we can. So I'd like to uh, introduce our uh, panelists uh, to you. Uh, we have uh, a great panel as we always put together for you uh, for educational and informative uh, purposes. And uh, today we'll be talking about how uh, we can be doing a business this front. Uh, introductions to economy, introductions to opportunities, business customs. So we learn uh, many uh, uh, different things uh, in terms of uh, doing business with France. And uh, I'm sure uh, you'll find it to be uh, informative. Let me introduce our, our uh, panelists uh, to you. Uh, we have Marcel uh, uh She's a senior international trade specialist in Long Island, a New York office of the U.S. Commercial Service, uh, the export promotion arm of the U.S. government. Uh, Marcel helps companies from Nassau and Suffolk counties increase their international sales by entering new global markets in a strategic and targeted manner. Her main industries of focus are aerospace, defense, safety and security, ICT, technology, and advanced manufacturing. She holds a master's degree in international relations and economics from John Hopkins University. Marisol, welcome to our panel. Thank you very much for joining. Marisol is always uh, very helpful and cooperative uh, with, our, with our community in HILI, and we really appreciate her, her support always. Thank you very much. Welcome to our panel. Uh, we have Brian uh, Tobner from uh, Empire State Department, uh, Global New York. Uh, Brian works uh, with businesses in New York City, Long Island area, and across New York State to promote export growth as part of the Global New York Division at New York State Empire State Development. To achieve this, Global New York has programs that can provide export market intelligence and distributor searches, as well as grants to offset the cost of eligible trade activities, such as trade show attendance. He directly manages the Global New York Grant Fund, which provides awarded New York State companies a matching grant for eligible export activities. Previously, he worked in Long Island Regional Office and New York City Regional Office of Empire State Development to promote business growth and economic development through the Regional Economic Development Council Initiative. Brian has a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science from the George Washington University and is originally from Long Island. Brian, welcome to our panel. 
we work very close with Brian and uh, his colleagues in uh, Empire State, Elizabeth and other colleagues. Uh, we really appreciate also his support as always. Uh, welcome to our panel, Brian. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, and we have uh, Jeremy Salker. Uh, he's from Business Development Industry and Tech at New York Office of Business France Invest, the French government's foreign direct investment attraction agency. Jeremy's role is to attract and accompany industrial development projects in France. All his services are free and confidential and include site selection, study, research and development, partnerships, recruitment, acquisitions, legal and tax uh, regulatory information, and uh, more of these type of subjects that he offers services. Uh, after obtaining an MBA in France and a Master's of Public Administration at New York University, Jeremy worked 12 years for the Hans Point Economic Development Corporation in the South Bronx, where he was coordinator of the New York State Economic Development Zone, and helped leverage $150 million in private investment and the creation of 3,000 manufacturing and international jobs. Then Jeremy worked eight years for the French American Chamber of Commerce in New York, where as membership director led the growth of a network of 1,000 French American professionals through thousands of personalized interests introduction and the organization of networking and information events in areas of technology, finance, food and beverage, luxury and fashion, and sustainability. Jeremy, welcome to our, our panel. We also work very close with Jeremy. Uh, 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 he also uh, was with us, I believe it was two years ago, we also had an event about the Indigenous in France. Uh, and Jeremy was with uh, uh, French American Chamber of Commerce at that time, so it was also a great event. So uh, we are very excited today to learn more about uh, doing business with friends, uh, economy, opportunity, challenges, and business customs. So let's get started. So for that purpose, I'd like to invite um, Marisol to our virtual stage, and uh, looking forward to hearing from her. Marisol, I'd like to uh, make sure you can share your screen. Uh, I let's see. see. Um, I think I need to make the presenter. It's coming up. Okay, there it is. Okay. So we are ready. Great. Thank you. I'm in the process of sharing my screen. I'll just say I have a very poor uh, since like network, so maybe I might have to turn off my video to see if that gets sure. if that gets no slightly problem. better. Uh, yes, we can see your screen. But um, let's see, let me, it seems like it's working now. So I'll, I'll leave it on, I'll leave it on. Okay, great. Um, so quite a pleasure being here this morning with you. Uh, I am, as Kevin mentioned, with the US Commercial Service. And on my presentation, I'll focus a little bit on exactly how to do business with friends and more on the resources that we as a US government entity Oh, Marisol, have for, uh, uh, my apologies. Yes. Kevin, sorry about that. I had to mention it earlier. Uh, so each uh, panelist has uh, uh, up to 20 minutes, and when five minutes left, I'll let you know. Okay, great. Works fine. Thank yeah. you. No problem. So yes, uh, I'll, I'll discuss a little bit more on the resources that we have for U.S. companies that want to do international business and find international opportunities overseas. And then I'll mention about a few opportunities in France towards the end uh, of my presentation. But yes, I'm with the US Commercial Service, and if I can pass on my slides, oh my God, it's, this is nerve wracking, because there you go. Um, okay, so I'll explain a little bit who we are. Um, as I mentioned, we are with the Department of Commerce, the US Department of Commerce, so we're part of a federal agency within Commerce, where we're with the International Trade Administration, and then there is the US Commercial Service. In a nutshell, our main mission is to help American companies a, find those opportunities overseas. And how exactly do we do that? Wow. There we go. A, we do that to a pretty extensive network of domestic trade specialists here in the United States, such as myself, and international um, commercial specialists overseas that are located in our US embassies and consulates. So basically, this is your taxpayers' dollars at play. Um, and um, in the United States, we are located in over 100 offices, Long Island being one of those places where we have a presence. And uh, as Kevin mentioned, a, our office is in Long Island and we covered Nassau and Suffolk County. And overseas, we are in nearly 80 embassies. 
So if you ever have uh, a question uh, that's business related on how to do, how to conduct a business in a specific market, whether that question is intellectual property or meeting a, or replacing your, your sales rep or, or doing business with the government itself, please reach out. A, specifically to Long Island, we cover quite a wide range of industries, almost all of them, as you can see, agricultural products, a, a education, uh, financial services, because uh, those exports is not just the physical uh, things, but also services. And actually services contribute quite a lot to the US uh, exporting economy. And that includes design and construction, engineering, education, travel and tourism, financial services, which is so big for the New York City area. I specifically cover a little bit more of the rough ones, if you want to call it like that, aerospace and defense, automation, advanced manufacturing, but also media and entertainment, safety and security, and they're all listed there. I'll mention that our main requirement is that the company is based either in Nassau or Suffolk counties. If you're not based in any of these counties, we, as I mentioned, have offices in other places in the United States, and we can easily just introduce you to the right trade specialist that can assist you. And um, the other main requirement is that whatever it is you offer, uh, manufacture, produce, has at least 51% US content. As a federal agency, we do have that rule. Um, Value-added uh, work here in, in the United States and jobs being retained here and all of that. Some of our services are fee-based. Uh, Many of them are not. And throughout the presentation, I guess I'll, I'll be making those differences. Just so you know. Uh, let me see, next slide. <laughs> Going to the next slide is the hardest thing for me. There we go. So specifically, we focus on four main areas to help a US company uh, with their export needs. We do export counseling, market intelligence, business matchmaking, and commercial diplomacy. I'll explain what all of this entail a little bit um, in the next few slides. We also, of course, do global events and, and things of that nature. So an expert counseling is uh, sitting down with a company and trying to understand what's their competitive advantage, try to understand what's their business goal. And uh, if they have a specific question, a certificate of sale, of free sale, how can I get one? That's not our area, but we can always try to point you in the right direction. Or standards. Um, oh my God, what's my standard? What are the standards that apply to, to export this product specifically to Malaysia? That type of assistance is, is what we do. This is all free of cost. I, I am constantly always on the phone between myself and the, the specialist overseas and the company, either telling them insights about whether it's the right, the right moment to, to do business in that market, whether their product has any potential in that market. Uh, maybe it's too pricey, or maybe they are, the, the quality is good, and that that's a specific market that looks for quality and overlooks a little bit the pricey stuff. So that, those types of insights. We also have an e-commerce innovation lab, and this is, I just want to mention briefly, this is when we can assist you to try to improve your website. And just for a very modest fee, $100, I believe it is, we can do a whole assessment of your website to see how how it fares internationally, to, to investigate some, um, if you're using the right key terms, the layout, uh, a search engine optimization type of stuff, okay? So these are some, on export counseling, these are some of the common exporting questions that we get. How can I be sure Brazil will accept the testing that has been done on my product? So I guess that comes a little bit on the standard side. How can I protect my intellectual property abroad? I'll mention that we have IP, intellectual property attaches, in key selected uh, markets that cover also regions. So in the case of France, we do not have one in France, but we have one that covers the EU completely. And these are lawyers, government lawyers, that can walk you through that process. Again, free of charge. Does my product qualify for preferential tariff treatment under a specific free trade agreement? We can walk you through that. After all, our teams are actually the ones that help assist draft these, uh, these big uh, FTAs. Can you help me find an in-country attorney to review my contract? 
Uh, so any sort of uh, service providers that you have to find in France, let's say, uh, uh, we can we can help assist you. As a government, we cannot recommend a single one. Um, we have to provide at least three different recommendations. But hey, uh, I guess the more the better for you. Uh, let's see. So can I export to Cuba, Syria, Sudan? Uh, this is a little bit more in the area of export compliance, which we can counsel somewhat on, but we're not experts in export compliance. For that, we rely on our sister agency, the business of uh, in, oh my God, BIS, Business of um, Industry and Security, pardon. And uh, we can put you in touch with, with the right person there. A, a, another one would be my buyer never paid me. That's kind of a hard one for us to help, but you never know what a letter from the embassy or the consulate can do to that uh, partner that you have in on the ground. So just some example you, uh, of the questions that we get all the time. Uh, they're very, they're very uh, all over the place, I guess, if you want to put it that way. But don't be afraid to reach out. If you do have a question uh, that it's related to international business, uh, maybe I don't know, I might not have the answer, but I can try to point you in the right direction. On market intelligence, uh, we have country commercial guides. This is free and it's all on our website, trade.gov. So for specifically for France, we have a commercial guide that is written by our people, by our experts and the embassy. And uh, it covers from challenges to, in, to opportunities to specific sectors that our people have identified. It show US companies have succeeded and show that there are opportunities for US uh, companies to, to do business in this country. We have from entry market strategies to, um, to, to things related more to customs and regulations and how to do business in general in that specific country. And we have over a hundred of those guides. So a very good first stop uh, if you're just considering a market and you just want to get your feet wet and find a good solid piece of information that covers many areas our country commercial guides. We can do customized market research for specific, specifically for your product, for your HS code. Um, if you're targeting a, a region and you want to know, for example, in Southeast Asia, which of the markets would be better, better suited for you, we can try to do that customized market research. Uh, we also do background checks, so please have this in mind. This has a cost. It would be, I believe, um, like $700 uh, for a small size company is a very thorough type of background check that we do. And this is actually quite popular. So if you are about to sign an agreement with a buyer that you found or a distributor or a sales rep or a joint venture, whatever it is, but you still want to do the due diligence of knowing, let, let's just make sure that they're in, you know, in, in good standing, our people can do that and that they go visit I guess before COVID, they go and uh, meet in person with C-level executives from that entity. They they collect recommendations from other organizations or companies that have done business with that entity. And at the end, they provide your report saying, we believe that it's, it's a good uh, or it, it's not. <laughs> um, so please have that in mind. Now, business matchmaking is probably the meat of the stuff that we do. This is what our specialists overseas spend so much time on, and it's finding you those right partners. So let's say that you are traveling to Taiwan and you are a little bit unhappy with your current sales rep, eh, but you have a business meeting there coming up. You can call us. The more time in advance, the better, because there is always sort of a pipeline. Uh, for uh, for you know, our services, but and say, hey, look, can you introduce me to at least five potential partners to see if I can replace my my distributor there? Our people can do that, and that's uh, known as the Golki service. I think it's a pretty reasonable price, nine hundred and fifty dollars for a small company, and our embassy does all the tra all the arrangements of. Um, first of all, pre-screening those potential candidates up to five, so it's very specific. A, up to five, and then they can arrange the meetings, the places where you can meet with these uh, potential partners. And if you deem it necessary, they can attend the meetings with you. We find that companies of all sizes, small, medium, and large, a, they really like some quite often having that US government presence at those meetings. 
because uh, I guess for legitimacy, for credibility and, and, and whatnot. But of course, now during COVID, uh, not much traveling is happening, at least not still. And um, we also provide the equivalent of the gold key service, but virtually. For example, our international partner search, we do, it does the same thing as the gold key, but instead, of course, of those in-person meetings and all of that, we make virtual introductions. So have that in mind if you're looking to 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 find uh, a business person or um, a, an agent, whatever it is that you need. We can also promote your company in the country. Many, many companies use this service to either launch a new product or even to do a workshop uh, to train their staff or their sales reps uh, in the country uh, on a specific technology or service. They can use the venues at the embassy or consulates for this type of company promotion. Or if you want to do a networking event, or if it's the first time you're going into that market and you really want to go all out with a reception, our people can help coordinate all of this uh, through this service called the single company promotion. All right. Those are the main ones there. As I mentioned, we do many trade events. Now, we've done so many of them virtually during these challenging times, but please do know that we can do trade missions. We can do certified trade missions, uh, which are exclusively organized by the Department of Commerce. For these, we rely more on partners to come to us and say, hey, look, uh, in this region in Nassau, or in, this, or in Suffolk, or in Long Island in general, there is a group of companies that would be very interested, 10 companies in the ICT industry, for example, that will really benefit from going to Eastern Europe and visiting foreign markets. Can we, can we do something about it? We can, we can try to do a certified trade mission and, and accommodate the needs of those companies. Of course, we're many domestic trade shows and international trade shows, but I just want to bring your attention very quickly to this part on the left side here, Discover Global Markets and Trade Wins. These are our flagship events. A DGM, as we call it, is more domestic. And this is when we bring foreign companies into the United States, location varies, focus on the industry varies. And we introduce you to those uh, foreign partners. And uh, also many primes from the US and globally too come like Boeing and Lucky Martin, uh, Cargill, you know, you name them. And you meet foreign partners without the, having the need to leave the United States. And Tradewinds is the opposite. That's when we take US companies to a foreign uh, market and make those introductions there. Okay, so if you see any sort of travel of uh, email correspondence on Tradewinds or DMs, know that this is what it is. I want to mention commercial diplomacy a little bit. Uh, this is more when a US company wants to apply to a public bid in a foreign country. So it's like selling to the government, right? Uh, whether it's school supplies, whether it's aerospace and defense type of aircraft and all of that, uh, we can help advocate for the US company. So have this in mind that many, um, this service is free actually, and uh, it's mostly used by the big companies, but a good 30 to 25% are small and medium sized companies. I'll give you the example of, uh, a Florida based company that sold actually school supplies equipment to the government of Trinidad and Tobago. And they came to us and said, hey, I'm very interested in this. Hey, can you advocate for us? And we actually advocated and um, they won the bid. So have that in mind, please. It's called commercial diplomacy. Uh, this is also to report any trade barriers that you've experienced are systematic uh, or a trade dispute sort of issue. I'll cite another example to give you an idea. Just recently a Long Island company came to us because they were bidding on an, air, on a, an airport a project and they found that, that there was a company from Europe, sorry, a government, a European government from a specific country that was sort of uh, spreading false news or false information about their product uh, in, in, in 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 this in this bid and they came to us and said hey can you can you actually send the letter to the government of such country i think it was vietnam is uh, saying that we are a legitimate company and we did that and um it removed uh that that sort of we, we call it a trade barrier so have this in mind 
Uh, this slide in here, hopefully uh, you'll, you'll get this PowerPoint, but it's filled with resources for US companies that are in that exploratory research uh, phase uh, for, for potential uh, markets. I already talked about the commercial guides. We talked a little bit about FTAs. We have NF FTAs with over 20 countries. I know that the USMCA for World NAFTA is probably the most common one, but do you know that we have an FTA with Oman, um, with uh, Peru? Uh, it's quite a few countries that are in there. I mean, not as many as we wish, but with Jordan, Bahrain, we have an FTA with them. So don't leave a deal on the table just because you think that these countries are too far and uh, a little bit unknown perhaps uh, to you. Check out and get familiar with the FTAs that we have. We have tools for industry research. We have this wonderful tool that I really like. It's called a market diversification tool. And all you need to know is your HS code for your product. You plug it in and it gives you uh, markets. It lists markets that have potential for you to sell in there. The census department has a similar tool. It's called Global Market Finder. And the good thing about it is that it gives you the price unit um, for that product uh, and what it is sold for in that market. So it helps you make plans for how to assign pricing, how to negotiate with your buyer and things like that. We have top market reports, market uh, destination videos, and all of this is available on trade.gov. Okay, and it's free, absolutely free to use. And here I just wanna mention a few upcoming events. Take advantage that now, I guess, restrict the restrictions on mobility, and I know we're tired of webinars and all of that, but there are quite a few, and many of them can be pretty, pretty good. These are a little bit more market specific in Europe and South America. A, and this in here, a little bit more, I guess, uh, sector industry specific. We have these upcoming webinars on infrastructure in the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. Both of them are free and both of them are in March. A, beauty and personal care products. So if you are in the cosmetics industry, we're doing this another free webinar for Southeast Asia specifically. And this will give you an idea of, of the market and also do for networking, good to know the people who are speaking and befriending them and things like that. Life sciences in Mexico, cybersecurity in India, a, and uh, what is it? You, a, technology in the US. I put that one in there. Uh, in Northern Europe, sorry, technology. I guess I should have read more about it. But uh, exporting mechanics webinar series this is to get you more inf uh, information on just exporting. In the basics of exporting, uh, embargoes, inco terms, trading the new digital world, such a such a new area that government is still even like catching up on exactly how to, to manage it in, in terms of exporting. Digital strategies. I found I found quite a few companies have called me just about digital strategies in general. Uh, because I guess COVID has you know, push that even even more than before, and how to upgrade their websites and how to 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 just improve that area uh, in general. And these are very very targeted type of digital strategies. So, uh, in, for advanced manufacturing, there is one in March 31st for consumer goods, ones with rural focus, and things like that. So take advantage of it, and they're all free. Okay. And now specifically to France, I'll mention that our embassy received a trade lead, we call them, from French firms that are looking to acquire U.S. companies in the following three, three sectors, wood care, lightening, cosmetics, and food supplements. These are French companies that really want to, I guess, invest in the United States, and they're looking to do that by acquisition uh via companies that that are in in these uh, in these industries so if you want to um please uh if you have any interest in in just learning more about it or getting introduced or things like that uh let me know my contact information is right here so thank you so much hopefully that was 20 minutes and you were able yeah. to hear all of, all of it because i know that my connection was spotty thank you Yes, we, we heard uh, loud and clear.
that was that was great. Thank you so much for the uh, for the presentation. Very educational, informative as always. And uh, Maricel and her office is always helpful, always responsive, as I know uh, very well. And uh, thank you, Maricel. So uh, Maricel will be with us. Uh, I know uh, you may have some questions. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A session uh, towards the end of our meeting. So uh, you can type your questions in chat box in the meantime, or you can wait till uh, uh, we have the Q&A session and we can ask our questions to Maricel and other, uh, our other panelists. <clears throat> thank you very much, Maricel. I appreciate it. Now I'd like to invite uh, Brian uh, from Empire State Development uh, to our virtual stage, I must say. Uh, let's, let's, let's make sure uh, Brian has this. Okay, Brian, now you can share your screen. All right, perfect. perfect. Thank you. All right, so looking good? All right, well, good morning, everyone. Yeah. Uh, Glad yeah, to be uh, here to have, present. Thank you for. Oh. Uh, sorry, Brian. My, my apologies. Uh, you have 20 minutes, and when five minutes left, I'll let you know. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Kevin. And good morning again. Thank you, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation. So I'll be speaking about New York State's Global New York Division and the French market and the export opportunities there. Uh, so what is Global New York? Global New York's mission is to promote uh, economic. Uh, activity in New York State through increasing export sales by small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, we are also able to attract foreign direct investment into New York State uh, through our uh, through our, some of our other programs that we have as part of our uh, Global New York initiative. Uh, we serve as a one-stop shop for New York State companies looking to uh, complete international initiatives. So as part of that, we have an international network of offices around the world that we've identified as being of strategic importance to New York State businesses. These offices include Canada. Uh, we have an office in Mexico. We have an office in Europe that's based in London. So we service both the UK and European countries through that office. Israel, uh, South Africa that covers a number of sub-Saharan African countries for us as well. We also have an office in China, and we have a foreign direct investment office in India that we're looking to uh, also in the future bring uh, and turn into also an export office. Uh, so those are the offices that we have. We also have some additional representation in South America. So Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Peru. If you have interest in those markets, we can also provide some assistance through our offices. I'll get to that in a second. So these are our three programs that we have to offer New York State businesses. We have the Export Marketing Assistance Service, we have the State Trade Expansion Program, STEP, and we have our Global New York Grant Fund Program. So first off, the Export Marketing Assistance Service, EMAS, this is a no-cost service that we offer to companies. And we're through the service, we're able to connect New York State companies with those foreign offices that I just brought up. So if you are interested in exporting to Canada, if you haven't begun exporting, or you've got some small export sales and you want to increase your sales, you can uh, connect with that office by completing one of our applications. And then through that application, you'll be provided with a market intelligence report identifying the uh, your industry in that market and uh, the demand for your product potentially, how your product would play in that market. So some really helpful information from our foreign offices. And then also a distributor search would be conducted. Uh, so you, a list of reputable distributors would be provided to your business and including potentially sales agents as well, so that going into a market, you'd have a list to start out with. You would be responsible for connecting with those distributors and identifying which one you'd wanna utilize, but that would be something that we could provide uh, to you to have a, uh, get a start into that market. Uh, the eligibility requirements for the EMAS program, uh, we have to be a New York State company. You have to be in business for at least one year and viable to export. You have the capacity to export uh, 500 employees or less. 51% of your product value added in New York State. So you could have manufacturing operations in New York State in another state or in another country, but 51% of that product value would have to be added in New York State itself. And then there's an online application or a PDF application, whichever you choose, you can complete on our website. And I'll just mention the website real quick if you want to check that out as well. Global.ny.gov is that you can just type that in the search bar and it'll get you to our Global New York page. Again, that's global.ny.gov. So the next program I'll mention is the State Trade Expansion Program. That's the STEP program. Uh, it's a federally funded program 
that New York State has been participating in since it began under the Obama administration. Uh, the STEP program, uh, currently we're running three different STEP rounds, the STEP 7, STEP 8, and STEP 9 rounds. Uh, companies in each of these rounds are able to apply for up to $13,000 in grant funds. Uh, the different STEP rounds are slightly different in what you can apply under uh, them for, the different export activities that are eligible. Uh, but we have a significant amount of funding uh, that will be uh, that companies are eligible to apply for until se September 29th of this year, or apply for complete activities by that date. Uh, is that the the phase out for these programs at the moment? We're keeping an eye out for a potential Step 10 round that will be again funded by the federal government, and that New York State will be applying for, so we can continue the step funding in the future. Uh, the companies will be reimbursed either 70% of the total project cost or a cap of the funding uh, for a different export activity. Uh, so these are some of the export activities that we can fund companies to complete their activities. Uh, foreign trade missions that Global New York would be leading. Uh, foreign, or excuse me, financial assistance awards for travel. If you complete an EMAS application and want to follow up with the travel to a market to identify the, or to meet with the distributor that you want to uh, conduct business with and just kind of seal that deal. That is something we can assist with. Uh, subscription services offered by the U.S. Department of Commerce, commercial service. So Maricel's programs, we can offer some assistance with those types of programs, including the Gold Key Service. Uh, with the U.S. Commercial Service Financial Award for Travel as well. Uh, export training workshops, if there's a workshop that would cover uh, legal, regulatory compliance, or just even information about a market or general export information that you'd like to participate in, we have uh, funding available that could cover that program or that type of acti export activity. International or domestic qualified trade shows. So if you're gonna be doing an international trade show in person that you want some cost offset for, that's eligible under this program. If you wanna do a domestic show that you can demonstrate has a significant amount of international attendees, and that you'd be going there for an international business opportunity, that's also something we could consider. Typically, it would be 20, 25% or greater international attendees uh, for, that to, for a domestic trade show to qualify. Website content, foreign language translation, if you can modify your website for a certain market and change it around so it would be more appealing to customers in a certain market. And of course, language translation, those are also services that we can reimburse companies for completing those uh, costs. Development of an international marketing campaign, these can be online ad, uh, ad campaigns, uh, banner advertisements potentially, also in print ad campaigns, in a trade publication that you've identified, or if there's another uh, international marketing campaign initiative that you'd like to undertake, you can discuss that with us. That's another activity under the STEP program that we have, again, federal grant monies for that we can help companies with. Virtual services, we added this in, uh, in the age of COVID, uh, obviously companies and personnel not wanting to travel as much, and then you have trade show venues themselves offering virtual services for companies. So that's a, an opportunity there. If there's an online trade uh, activity you'd like to participate in, and then compliance testing. For markets like the European Union and others, there are usually uh, some compliance tests that will need to be performed on products before they're certified for sale and uh, import into European countries and European Union countries. So that's something uh, that we could help companies with as well. And then with the STEP program, just again, it's a reimbursement grant. So once the activities would be completed, then we could reimburse a company for their cost. There's an application on our website, again, global.ny.gov, and you would complete that. You check off the activities that you're interested in participating in, and then we can uh, review that application. We would send out an award letter, and once you receive that award letter, you go through with the project. You, once the project is completed, you send us your documents, uh, proof of payments, receipts, financial documents of that kind related to the activities you completed, and then we would cut a check uh, for the appropriate amount after we reviewed your eligible expenses. So for the eligibility, uh, with this program, it's a little bit more forgiving than the EMAS program because that is a New York State program. This is a federal program. So it is similar in that you'd have to be operating in New York State, uh, manufacturing, someone distributing a product, uh, or, or you know, some services potentially in New York State as well, but primarily manufacturing. Uh, you have to be in business for at least one year. You have to be an eligible small business concern, less than 500 employees by the SBA size standards, and a product or service 
that contains at least 51% U.S. content as opposed to New York State content. So that's the way that uh, it's a little bit more forgiving. A large, a broader array of companies could be eligible under this as opposed to uh, the New York State specific programs. Then again, online app application or also a PDF application is available at global.ny.gov. These are some of the previous export activities that New York State, Global New York has led New York State companies on. Uh, in 2019, we've com we completed a multi-sector trade mission to Mexico, multi-sector trade mission to Israel, and we completed the MedTech trade show in China in September of 2019. Uh, obviously, as you can all imagine, we didn't complete any activities in 2020. We did uh, have the Hanover Message trade show slated for 2020, but that was April of 2020, and uh, nobody was going anywhere uh, April of 2020. So we that has been postponed. We thought it might be in person, but given uh, COVID, we it has been converted into a digital trade show uh, at Hanover Messe. So it's going to be in April uh, of 2021. We still are leading companies on this show, uh, and I'm, we still are recruiting for companies as well. So what I'll just mention briefly too is with this digital Hanover Messe trade show opportunity, you'll be able to exhibit online uh, at no cost, which is uh, a very unique opportunity. As I was mentioning, there's a reimbursement cost for our programs typically, or for export activities typically under step. For this activity, we are able to uh, negotiate for a no cost as New York State would be paying the full amount for the small size uh, digital trade exhibits or virtual trade exhibits. The deadline, uh, the activity would be taking place uh, April 12th to the 16th of 2021. The registration deadline is March 29th, 2021. And this is the largest industrial trade show in the world. Uh, companies from all around the world, including uh, probably in Europe, uh, in the French market too, uh, would be participating. These are some of the prime uh, sectors, automation, ocean drives, compressed air, vacuum, digital ecosystems, energy solutions, engineered parts and solutions and logistics. So if you're a company that would be in any of these categories, you would be interested in participating in this opportunity, please do get in touch with me and I'd be happy to discuss this further with you for this unique, again, no cost uh, opportunity to participate in this digital handover message trade show. So I uh, just wanted to touch on that and please do let me know if you're interested. Uh, and I just want to mention briefly the Global New York Grant Fund Program, which was uh, mentioned that I had been administering this program. This is a New York State funded grant program that allows for a consolidation of uh, export activities into one uh, project that you would submit to New York State and to Global New York for review and potential funding. Uh, also, just mention right now that unfortunately it is on pause due to COVID and some budget related uh, items. So we're, we don't, we can't take any applications at the moment. But we are hoping that by the end of the year it'll be back online and then you'd be it's uh, similar eligible activities to the step program if you apply for them as part of one larger strategic export project and then uh, we would review that the eligibility of uh, cost would be a 50 percent reimbursement for the grant fund program as opposed to the 70 percent but it can be for a higher amount so for a private company for for instance you could receive up to a $25,000 grant for a $50,000 total project cost. That would be the cap, and below that would be a uh, twenty or $10,000 would be the minimum grant award for a $20,000 project, and it's a 50-50 reimbursement uh, at that point. Uh, so we're hoping that this program is online. I'll be in touch with Kevin when this program does come back online so I can spread uh, the news and hopefully take some applications uh, at, towards the end of 2021 for this program. If you have any questions about this, I'm also happy to just discuss this a bit with you. But again, unfortunately, for the time being, it is on pause and we cannot take applications. So I did just also want to touch on a few facts and figures for the French market uh, for you to be aware of that I was able to receive from our foreign office located again in London that covers Europe for us. So with regards to France, it's the third largest economy in Europe the seventh largest economy in the world, population of over 67 million people. There's 13 French regions, and it's a centralized country uh, around Paris, uh, the capital. It's the third largest trade partner in Europe for the United States. It's the ninth largest trade partner globally uh, for, for the United States, and 38% of all U.S. exports of France were aerospace products. Uh, this is in 2018 uh, for companies in the aerospace defense uh, sector. So just touching on the total trade uh, between the U.S. and France, $138 billion of trade goods and services 2019 were exchanged between 
the United States and France. So it is a there is a significant trade relationship present, and it also poses a significant opportunity for New York State companies. So just some brief insights on the market. Uh, well, France is renowned internationally for its tourism and domestic consumer markets. It is also the second largest agricultural exporter globally, behind only the United States. Uh, meanwhile, its manufacturing sector prominently feature, uh, features an array of chemical, automotive, and armament, defense, aerospace industry clusters for New York State companies to consider. So these are some of the top sectors here, uh, aerospace, agri-food, the service, se service sectors, including consultancy and marketing, uh, information communication technology, ICT, robotics, clean tech and smart tech, uh, fintech financial technology and wellness. So if you, your company participates in any of these kind of fields, including well, wellness, I'm sure we also include health, uh, healthcare. So any of those kind of fields, and I'll touch on some specifics in a second, this would be a, a good market for you to consider. So as far as aerospace and defense goes, the lar it's the European Union's largest industrial sector uh, is in, located in France, uh, 300,000 direct and indirect jobs in manufacturing, research and development there, and the second largest aerospace exporter in the world. Uh, some of the major companies are listed there, including Air Airbus, uh, and I believe that's Dassault, uh, aviation. Uh, the Paris Air Show is the largest global aerospace trade show. Uh, so that in the future, that, that's based in uh, Paris, and that's something to consider as well going forward that New York State's programs could potentially help you with, uh, with the STEP program to offset the cost if you're going to participate in the future in that trade show. Uh, there's significant government funding uh, in the aerospace and defense sectors, uh, as you can imagine. So the biosciences sector, uh, they rank fourth in position in Europe in clinical trials, 720 bioscience companies located there, uh, 66 billion generated by the pharmaceutical industry, 49% is exported, uh, 8, 000, over 8,000 people employed in bioproduction in France and 32 uh, bioproduction sites in France, uh, in France, three belong to groups of international origin. Um, France imported $19.3 billion worth of medical products or medicinal products. Uh, these imports came mainly from Germany, Switzerland, Belgium, the United States, and Ireland. Uh, the French export of medicine is worth $27 billion, and the U.S. is the number one destination for their exports. And medical devices as well, I'll touch on. Fifth largest market in the world for medical devices, uh, 1,500 businesses, 93% are small, medium sized uh, enterprises, 33 billion in sales on the French market, and 90,000 employees in this sector. Uh, four future trends to consider for medical devices in France would be population aging, the increase of chronic diseases, rise of health expenditures over time, and integration of patient centered digital tools, so e health uh, technology. Uh, the French demand for medical equipment was estimated at four, over $40 billion in 2020, and $4.7 billion of that was imported from the United States. So there's a significant market there for medical devices. Uh, demand for diagnostic equipment, rehabilitation, surgery equipment, medical prostheses, uh, intensive care, hygiene, and uh, other health products in those sectors. So just touching on the COVID impact very briefly, uh, as Every uh, economy in the world took an incredible hit in 2020. France is prospected uh, to be one of the fastest to rebound uh, going forward into 2021. So there will be significant market, market opportunities in France following uh, COVID, that's uh, estimated. And some of the sectors that have seen high growth and high potential uh, with regards to COVID and the aftermath of that would be fintech, uh, telehealth, robotics and drones, remote working technology, 5G, and again, information communication technologies. So any companies in that would be an opportunity at the moment to consider the French market. And then again, just uh, why export to France, just go over some points here. Uh, direct flights uh, from New York to Paris uh, frequently. Uh, large density of high-speed rail services in France allow easy connections. So if you need to go uh, into the various regions of France, it will not be difficult. Uh, it remains a business powerhouse with the largest concentration of headquarters in Europe. France is the second largest economy in Europe and continues to attract high level investment with 45% of French equity owned by non-French residents. 
Uh, France is a highly educated workforce and has some of the top business schools in the world. France is a vital connector to access in the European market. As you, once you get in uh, to the French market through the European Union uh, regulations, you'd have access to the rest of the European common market as long as you, you know, meet those regulations. French is a land border with other European powers, including Belgium, Germany, Switzerland, with good connections over 500 million consumers in the European single market. Uh, during the UK, UK's transition from the EU, several businesses have been relocating to France, and that's been an ongoing trend. You'll, you've, uh, we've seen that some UK bu businesses that were based in the UK have moved to other cities in Europe, including uh, Paris. I know for financial uh, products, a lot of UK businesses had moved to, uh, that were based in Europe, had moved to Frankfurt in Germany. So that's uh, been a trend uh, with Brexit. France is a hub for research and development with substantial resources, support, and tax incentives. So that's another thing to consider uh, going forward. And that wraps up my presentation. And if you have any questions regarding any of our programs that Global New York offers, uh, please do let me know. And uh, again, the Hanover MSA trade show, uh, please do let me know about that as well. Uh, you can reach us at 212-803-2300. My extension would be 2346 uh, to get in touch with me directly. And I will look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Brian, thank you so much for this presentation. Very informative, as always. We learned a lot. Thank you. Uh, so uh, you, you may have questions for Brian. Um, so uh, Brian will be with us. Uh, and uh, please type your questions in the chat box. And we're going to have a QA and a session after Jeremy's uh, presentation. So we will have a chance to interact with our, with our panelists. Thank you very much, Brian. Now I'd like to invite uh, Jeremy Sauter. Uh, from EMS, uh, from uh, Business France, and uh, we'll learn about, um, we we'll learn more about France and how we can build uh, business with France in terms of importation, exportation, exportation, investment plans, and uh, other activities. Uh, let me see if I can make Jeremy the presenter. Okay, Jeremy. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kevin. So let me open up my presentation. Okay. Is that, is that all good now? Uh, yes, it, it looks great. Thank you. Okay, great. So uh, good morning, everyone. As uh, Kevin explained, uh, I'm the representative of uh, Invest in France which is the uh, the part of our agency that attracts uh, foreign direct investments in France. And I'm located at uh, the New York office. We target the entire uh, North American market. And I specifically uh, work with uh, industrial companies, industrial American companies. So um, to present what uh, the services of our agencies what we do is we're going to accompany your investments in France. And that means that we're going to coordinate national and regional stakeholders uh, to on in all the steps of your projects. So to give you an example of, uh, of what that includes, uh, do you have uh, tax uh, financing, legal regulations questions? Would you like to identify project subsidies uh, from France, and there are many. Uh, would you like to be introduced to uh, national uh, agencies, uh, national institutions? Uh, do you need help with your expatriates when it comes to obtaining a visa or facilitating their, uh, their administrative uh, uh, setup in France? Uh, we also have a desk that is uh, f focused on acquisitions. So if you'd like to uh, be put in touch with, um, with M&A uh, firms on the buy side or, or even on the sell side, uh, we have a desk in Paris that's going to look at your investment criteria and make the right connections. And they also have a, a databases uh, through their national network of uh, small and medium-sized companies uh, that are looking to be acquired. Uh, 
and so they can use that as well and uh, we also can help with technological partnerships uh, so as uh, brian was explaining uh france has a very rich uh, r d ecosystem which i will i will talk more later and we can make introductions so you can collaborate with um, another uh, french company in uh, the development of your of your technology uh, and at the regional level we rely on a rich network of uh, regional economic development agencies it's a bit like the the states of the of the united states if you will so a little bit like empire state development and we um we help uh, we they they help our american investors with se uh, selecting a site or uh, then the assistance with recruitment and training connecting them with their local uh, research and uh, and business ecosystems and then their local subsidies as well and i should add that all our services are free and confidential uh, confidentiality is very important for us uh, so why invest in france now um, as, uh, as as brian was explaining france is now a, a very attractive country uh, we have key strength which i will talk about and also a, a pro-business uh, reform agenda so in in terms of um, of in foreign investments uh, france has become number one, the number one country in Europe uh, for attracting foreign direct investment uh, ahead of our friends uh, in Germany and in, in the UK. In, in 1,468 projects, uh, uh, actually decisions of, uh, of investments were made in 2019. Uh, here we did a survey actually at the beginning of 2021 uh, to uh, ask about American investors' uh, confidence. And the numbers were, were quite uh, satisfying uh, because the, in France, we have, as Brian explained, uh, we are one of the best countries for rebounding from the uh, COVID crisis in terms of national support and the French uh, stimulus plan that has been put in place. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a plan of one, 100 billion euros to stimulate the economy. And 96% of our investors support uh, and praise this plan. And, and, and even 54% think it's even or more competitive than the other plans from the other European countries. Uh, the confidence in terms of uh, rebounding from the crisis is, uh, is also at a good level, as you can see. And in general, investors have a, a positive, 85% uh, have a positive or very positive perception of the innovation ecosystem in France. Uh, here is to give you a little bit of, of a view of American investors in, um, in France. I mean, in total, 4,500 companies, 400 to, to 420,000 people, so very significant. Uh, we have 575 companies uh, among the Forbes 2000 that are in France, and, uh, in, and it's the leading country, uh, the U.S. is the leading country investing in R&D in France. These are just some examples of companies you can, that I'm sure you know of in terms of water, um, uh, energy, uh, vent heating, ventilation, equipment, aerospace. Uh, and also uh, glass and uh, photonics. Um, so we have a business-friendly environment. When, well, as I explained, it's relatively easy to form a company in France, uh, only four days and, and cost also is, is very uh, minimal. Um, and we also have uh, introduced a very uh, significant uh, reforms of the labor market to make it more flexible and, uh, and administration, administrative regulations uh, in, uh, in general. Um, innovation, it's a very, uh, a very important part of uh, the, uh, the, the French uh, ecosystem. Uh, French has become a startup nation uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the number of uh, startups uh, creation and also uh, fast growing startups in the in the tech sector 
uh, the innovation ecosystem is, is quite developed uh, in France uh, because we have uh, several resources. We have, uh, first of all, a, um, a research and development uh, incentive, which is one of the best, uh, if not the best, in Europe, uh, which, uh, which uh, these uh, incentives cover the, the research and development expenses, uh, including uh, partnerships with the universities, uh, staff, uh, contractors, and it's, uh, the credit will be 30% of up to 100 million euros. So it's extremely, uh, extremely generous and it applies to any size of, uh, of companies. And the tax credit is even refundable after, uh, after three years. In addition to that, we have uh, different funds in France that, uh, that fund uh, innovation, uh, like BPI French, which is the, the French Public Investment uh, Bank. And we have different uh, incubators, accelerators. Uh, you might have heard of the, uh, uh, of the Station F in Paris, which has become the largest uh, uh, incubator of startups in, um, in Europe, with uh, 3,000 uh, 3, people housed in this, uh, in this building. Uh, and uh, we also have research institutes, for example, the National Center of Scientific Research, which is considered uh, one of the top five in the, in the world in terms of public, uh, public research. And also we have innovation, uh, innovation clusters, which I will talk more. So these um, innovation clusters are, uh, there is 56 in total, and they are spread uh, throughout France, uh, as you can see on this map, and each one has a sectorial expertise. And their role in uh, innovation is, is key, uh, because they are going to help co coordinate the different stakeholders, the large corporations, the mid-sized corporations, the startups, uh, the, the research institutes, the universities, uh, the government in a collaborative, in facilitating collaborative projects. And not only do they facilitate these projects, but they help them apply to private financing, they help them apply to public subsidies, uh, including European subsidies, which are very significant. They help with, with regard to certification of the, uh, of the technology in uh, uh, protecting the international property and they will also help with with regard to partnerships technology partnerships which is uh, finding uh, so uh, foreign companies with whom to partner uh, so uh, this is a sample of the some of these uh, innovation uh, clusters in france and these are some of the most uh, performing and you can see that it covers a wide range. Uh, and here I listed all, all the industrial sectors because this is my, my specialty. And I think that's what is mo of most interest to the, uh, to the Long Island Industry uh, Association. And uh, so you, uh, you can see that there is automotive, there is plastics, energy, robotics, uh, microelectronics, industry 4.0, aerospace, and, and technical textiles. Um, we also offer, uh, uh, the French government uh, also offers uh, turnkey industrial sites. Uh, again, this is uh, throughout France, and this is the uh, sites that are either uh, greenfield or, or brownfield, and uh, you can, they can be used for production, for logistics, for R&D, and what, what is great about this site is that the, uh, the environmental and the zoning approval approval uh, are accelerated. Uh, here is what I was uh, alluding to, which is the, the National France uh, Recovery Plan. Uh, very ambitious, very bold. Uh, over two years, uh, 2021 and 22, it's 100 billion euros of investment into the economy. Uh, and it has three major parts, which is one is the ecological transition, very important uh, for France, the decarbonation of the industry, uh, decarbonation of uh, transportation. Uh, so that's a very important area of, for France. So if you have projects that involve this part, uh, you will definitely uh, be of interest to France. And uh, competitiveness, reduction of, uh, of, of taxes, 
and also when it comes to investment in uh, in skills skills training uh, here is some of the um, examples of the investments of uh, of this plan uh, digital transformation of the uh, industry for example uh, when it when it comes to uh, uh, investments in uh, also in, in digital uh, solution of the factory in the industry 4.0 uh, robotics, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, driverless vehicles, all these sectors. Uh, here is uh, regarding the aerospace uh, sector, which is uh, a sector that uh, also Brian was mentioning as uh, one of the key uh, uh, parts of the American uh, exports uh, to France. It's also one, a key area of uh, American investment in, uh, in France. And so 15 billion uh, right now is allocated by the, the French state to support this, uh, this strategic uh, sector. Uh, and here it's in the automotive sector, also very key in France. Uh, right now there are several projects that also are uh, based on the uh, vehicle of the future uh, with, uh, with batteries, uh, with uh, hydrogen, hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, so Companies that are developing this kind of technology are uh, very, uh, very welcome uh, right now in France. There is actually a, a, a European level project of uh, several billion euros uh, supporting the uh, batteries and, and hydrogen for, for transportation. Um, here in a little bit of, um, in terms of the talent uh, pool in France, uh, we have uh, more than one million uh, uh, researchers uh, and, and scientists um, and engineers in France and the uh, the average cost of a researcher is actually pretty competitive compared to uh, other countries 50% uh, uh, less than the US or 21% or less than Germany um, in productivity is also a uh, uh, on a good uh, level in France uh, we have apprenticeship and, and vocational uh, training programs. Uh, and uh, in terms of energy, uh, which is uh, also important for, for industrial businesses, uh, we have been ranked as the number one country in the world for uh, quality and availability of, the, uh, of energy and, and also when it comes to uh, the cost, cost of energy. And that has to do also with uh, France, uh, rich infrastructure, very well developed uh, energy infrastructure, uh, including nuclear energy and, uh, and renewable uh, energies. Uh, in terms of logistics, also we are uh, quite well positioned in, uh, in Europe uh, when uh, it comes to um, roads, uh, when it comes to rail, also a very dense uh, rail uh, network. Uh, when it comes to air, airplanes and uh, international uh, uh, gateways and also in general uh, when it comes to freight uh, with the major port uh, connecting the uh, northern Europe and the, and the Mediterranean. Uh, here a little bit of a, um, a brief uh, focus on the aeronautic and space industry which is uh, as, uh, as Brian was explaining also the uh, one of the one of the key areas of, uh, of American uh, uh, presence and American exports. Uh, so France uh, is a European leader in that sector and number two world between uh, behind the United States. Uh, the, the presence uh, of the uh, industrial presence is, is very rich uh, with uh, 190,000 employees uh, and actually uh, companies are a lot of companies uh, producing in France are exporting to the rest of the world. So this is an investment also that uh, will, will translate into, um, into exports. Uh, Airbus is a, uh, the, uh, a world leader in terms of uh, aeronautics. Um, and we have a rich uh, environment for innovation supporting uh, aeron aeronautic and space. Uh, and including the, uh, the International uh, Paris uh, Air Show. And you can see uh, some, some examples of, uh, of companies, uh, American companies that uh, operate in France 
in that sector, uh, Hexel and uh, Collins uh, Aerospace. So it is a, a summary again of, uh, of what we can do uh, for, for your, your project. Um, and I, I remain available for uh, any inquiry of um, you know, any project you are considering uh, to see uh, what kind of uh, connections we can uh, help you make uh, in France. Thank you. Jeremy, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Let me take over the screen and we can continue our our session, our meeting with Q&A session, I must say. All right, great. So uh, now I'm opening the floor for questions. I have been also receiving uh, questions from the chat box uh, privately to me. And if you have any questions, also please turn on your microphone and uh, you can share with uh, our panelists. So one of the questions I receive is, uh, Jeremy, I think that's for you at the start. Uh, I have many questions here on my list. So. Uh, how is the effect of Brexit in terms of France and uh, doing business in France and economically? Uh, what type of effects uh, do you see or are there? Yes, definitely we have seen uh, an effect of, uh, of Brexit in France uh, in terms of uh, companies that are, uh, you know, UK has, has uh, traditionally uh, been a, uh, a first uh, point of entry in, uh, in Europe. Uh, for for a, a lot of American firms uh, because of the of the language uh, obviously uh, but now with the uh, the restrictions on the uh, exports of uh, of goods and services uh, and you know and more more certifications that are needed uh, the supply uh, chain uh, from UK to Europe uh, being uh, being disrupted. Uh, we have more and more inquiries of companies that, um, you know, were initially looking to to start an office in um, in UK to uh, to cover Europe, and uh, now they're talking to us uh, about uh, potentially uh, uh, translating uh, translating this uh, uh, presence to to what they call the continent. Uh, I think uh, companies now. With the with the Brexit view, uh, presence in France as a uh, more anchoring to uh, to the continent, and uh, and so we have definitely seen a, an increase of uh, of of interest. Uh, and in in the in the truth is that when you uh, for example when you look at France, uh, uh, for example, if you are uh, next to the uh, if you are in the north uh, of France you have an excellent connection uh, not only with the UK uh, but uh, in, but also with the uh, the, the most uh, uh, number of countries in Europe in terms of uh, in terms of transportation and uh, and logistics so we are definitely um, seeing a, a post brexit uh, effect thank you jeremy uh, I believe also uh, Brian mentioned uh, some information in terms of Brexit and its effect uh, in terms of moving some business from um, from London to uh, Paris and Frankfurt. So that was also included in uh, Brian's presentation. Great, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Let's see if there is another question. So one question is for Marisol. Uh, so we understand that there are many uh, services that uh, uh, we can get from uh, US, uh, US commercial service in different countries. So how can we find these services uh, provided in, in foreign countries? Marika? Hi. Okay. I, my audio is terrible, and I just oh, heard sorry. parts of the question. Okay. Uh, but I it's about okay. where they can find services. In foreign countries, correct. Yes, you got it. Thank you. Uh, foreign ser or foreign services in foreign countries. Um, well, I think that uh, one, if you have a very specific question, uh, please uh, email me, contact me, and I guess I'll ask the question, assess the question, and see if I myself can answer. If not, uh, I can always schedule a call with our specialist in the market. 
a let's see something recently a, for example i have uh this long island client a company that wanted to to uh to do business in the cosmetics area in norway for example a, and uh uh, they wanted to know the lay of the land, uh, how to get certificates, how to get a, in compliance regulations. You know, cosmetics are very regulated by the European Union, even though Norway, I don't think it's in the European Union, but they follow closely those, uh, those rules. So we, we uh, canceled that company in that area. So I think a good first start, as I mentioned, would be just to check out those country commercial guides that I mentioned, uh, which are on trade.gov. If still after that you you want to know more or you have further questions, ping me, let me know, and uh, we can we can try to find the answer uh, together. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mauricio. Uh, another question is uh, for Brian. Uh, Brian, you mentioned different programs from Empire State Development, and um, I understand companies from New York State can apply this sort of. Uh, guidelines and instruction uh, based on your presentation as we are learning. Uh, so a company in New York State, how many times a company can apply for your services uh, or, or programs, I must say, in a year? Right. So for the EMAS program, companies are able to apply for two different markets. So if you did want to apply for, say, uh, in the European market, you could select two sub-markets, uh, say France and the UK, for instance, and that will be one of our regional or our foreign offices, so that would count as one, and then you could select a second one that might be Canada or Mexico, for example. Uh, so that would be uh, in, in approximately a year period. It might be a little less than that. It could be you know, six to eight months, depending on uh, your completion uh, and follow up with the results from your first DMAS, but that's uh, you know, approximately how the application would work. And then with the STEP program, depending on the round that you're in, because we have step seven, we have step eight, and we have step nine, if you're going to be applying for one activity under step seven, uh, for instance, the Hanover Messe trade show, which is uh, that rebate is under, or uh, that, that no cost participation, I say it's not a rebate, it's just no cost participation, is available under the step seven program. You can apply for that, and then you can apply for something under step eight uh, and step nine as we gauge that by the step round itself. So if you, there's a cap of $13,000 per step round, but you can apply for multiple, uh, you know, different activities under the different step rounds. So that one's a lot more flexible. And if you have multiple activities you're looking to complete under the STEP program, uh, please do let me know and we can discuss your options under that. Thank you, Brian. Uh, is there any questions from our audience? I have one more question uh, before I ask uh, to our panelists. If you have any questions, you can unmute your microphone and you can ask our panelists uh, directly if you like. Okay, uh, so uh, I have, I think, one uh, last question. I think that's for, for Jeremy. So, uh, 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 Jeremy, this question is, um, so uh, we know there are many uh, uh, French-speaking countries in Africa, and uh, investing in, in France or doing business with France, uh, how would it uh, benefit in terms of uh, uh, doing business in Africa, especially French-speaking African countries? Um. Yes, uh, yes, th uh, thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, Kevin. I'm turning on my camera. Yes, okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in terms of uh, doing business in Africa, uh, yes, indeed, uh, indeed, France uh, can be a, a launching pad uh, for that. And uh, we have actually seen projects where uh, an investor would set up a presence in the uh, in the southern part of France. Uh, in the uh, in the Provence uh, area, uh, which is connected directly to the Mediterranean Sea, and uh, and as such has uh, direct access to uh, to North Africa, and the uh, the port uh, the port of Marseille uh, is uh, is one of the largest ports uh, in Europe, and uh, in in the largest ports uh, in uh, in the Mediterranean. And can thus uh, provide a, uh, a connection with uh, with Africa. Uh, in addition to that, yes, the uh, the resources of uh, that French offers uh, obviously uh, would be uh, French, uh, you know, French-speaking employees, uh, 
uh, and sometimes also uh, immigrants from uh, from Africa uh, that uh, can provide a, a natural uh, connection with the uh, with the continent. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate it. Uh, well, it looks like we address uh, uh, we ask all the questions for our panelists, uh, so they've been all uh, addressed. I also see uh, my colleague uh, Ron Loveland online. Ron, anything that you like to add before we uh, make our uh, final announcement? Yeah, no, uh, very good. Oh, sorry about that. Very good presentation this morning. Thank you for all our panelists and for the great information. Uh, manufacturers are always looking for ways to increase their revenues, so this is uh, just one more avenue for them to uh, to work on. And um, have you mentioned uh, what we're doing next month, Kursad? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, let's see. Yes, there it is. It's on the screen. So next month we'll be uh, learning about Brazil, how doing business with Brazil. And as we all know, uh, Brazil is the largest economy in South uh, America. And we'll be learning about uh, economy uh, opportunities and also business customs about doing business in, in Brazil. And we are looking forward to it. Uh, also, we had some also, uh, meetings in uh, previous weeks. Uh, so we'll also have some joint meetings coming up in May with uh, Technology Committee. So we'll also uh, share some more information about how to use technology in manufacturing. And it is also coming up in May, I believe. Right, Ron? Anything else that we need to announce today? Yeah, and uh, you, you may want to mention your uh, your BIMSER um, summit that you're hosting next week. Um, I'll be part of that, uh, talking about uh, how to pass an OSHA inspection on the 16th, and then 17th we'll be talking about uh, uh, the approach that we take to uh, improving business processes. Correct. So that is uh, scheduled on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you very much. So let's schedule on Tuesday and Wednesday, and we'll be talking about how to utilize technology for remote work. Um, I'll also send a separate, separate email for this. That's also in our, on our event right page if you like to register. So you can utilize technology as to uh, how you can use uh, technology for uh, uh, for predictive maintenance, predictive asset management, predictive quality management, AI, automation, and all these important digital subjects, especially more important nowadays for remote work. So we'll be talking about it as well. So we have. We are excited for it. It is coming up on Tuesday, and it will be also available on uh, on Wednesday next week. So feel free to register uh, as well on our event right page. Uh, in addition to our uh, meeting uh, next week, uh, next month in April for um, doing business this front. Great, thank you so much. I'd like to thank our panelists. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you as always uh, for your uh, educational and informative uh, presentation. We learn a lot. And we'll be learning, of course, I have no doubt. So I'd like to thank you for your time and thank you for sharing your expertise. Uh, if you have any questions to our panelists, uh, you can send an email. And uh, please join us for our next uh, month uh, committee meeting about doing business with, uh, with Brazil. And also, if you'd like to join our summit, it's for uh, how to work uh, remotely uh, by utilizing technology. Please join us on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, which is available on our event right page if you like to visit. Thank you very much and have a nice day. You will be safe. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. Take care.